Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, we're going to pick back up on the inclusion groups topic, and I want to show you end to end how to set this feature up and apply it to channels in your inventory so that the coordinated frequencies can be applied directly to devices that use inclusion groups. As we mentioned in the previous video, the inclusion groups feature is a great way to allocate certain spectrum to certain channels in wireless workbench when performing frequency coordination. And though the feature uh, primarily affects the frequency coordination flow, it's important to understand how you can assign inclusion groups to particular channels to really get the most out of that coordination and then send it right to your devices. So in the example I want to show you today, we'll talk about band planning as a topic uh, in another video, but what I'm going to show you are the, the high-level overviews of what band planning looks like, starting from the inventory. And in my inventory, I've got two types of devices. I've got Axiant digital receivers in the G57 band. Uh, for those in the United States, you might be familiar with this band. This is in our low uh, 470 to... Um, uh, 606 or 608 megahertz this is in the low, uh, the low end of the UHF TV bands, and then the PSM 1000 in the G10 band, which goes from 470 to 542 megahertz. So both mic and IEM systems are operating in, in the same relative range, at least they overlap with one another, and I've color coded them, uh, blue for the mics and pink for the PSMs, just so that we can see them with a little bit more clarity. So what I first need to do, if I want to, so here's, here's the setup here. I've got two systems, mics and IEMs, two types of systems that overlap in the same relative spectrum. And what I'd like to do is make sure that frequencies from my mics do not overlap with frequencies from my IEMs, that they are separated in the spectrum. So the first thing I need to do to do this is to set up inclusion groups that correspond to each of those frequency ranges. One for mics, one for IEMs in this case. So what I'll do is in the frequency coordination tab, I'll go to the inclusions dialog and I'll turn on this inclusions feature and I'll select manage to build my groups. Now I know lists and groups might be confusing or the difference between them might not be clear. A list is a set of groups. So if I am on a tour uh, throughout the United States or internationally and I might want to apply a different set of frequency constraints for each leg of the tour, I could have a list for each, uh, each stop on the tour and within that list I could have groups that specify what my frequency ranges are. So I would say this is my... Um, July tour stop. I can call that anything I want. Um, so now we can really move on beyond the list and focus on the groups. So what I'm going to do here is for each range of frequencies I want to assign, I'm going to create one group. So for my microphones, I want to say um, from 470 to 500, I want these mics to tune to, and I'm going to just call this mics. 470 to 500 mics. And when I create that group, I like to bake the frequency range that I intend on using into the name. It helps me remember. Uh, so when I have that group selected, I simply add one uh, frequency element. I'll make sure that it's a range and I can type uh, 470 to 500. And this says that this group, any frequencies with this group assigned will be constrained to that frequency range. I could have just as easily selected a particular TV channel if I knew that that TV channel was the range I wanted to stick to. That's just a nice convenience there. Uh, but that's that. And then what I'll do is I'll create another group for my IEMs. I'll say I want to uh, tune from, I'm going to say 505 because I want to leave a 5 megahertz gap between these bands to 542, which is the top of the PSM band. Uh, the G10 that I'm using. And I'm going to call that 505 to 542 IEMs. And I'll do exactly as you'd expect. Limit this range from 505 to 542. And uh, you'll notice that the order in which these groups are listed is actually significant. Um, Wireless Workbench will prioritize these inclusion groups based on the order they're listed. So if my IEMs were more important for some reason, I could jog that up in the list by selecting it and using these arrows. I'm actually going to leave it as it is specified here. But one thing I will do, which is kind of nice, is I can assign colors to each of these inclusion groups. I'll do pink for my IEMs, like I did in the inventory, and then blue for the mics. And you will see how that will show up in the frequency coordination view in a second as a nice a visual cue to where those frequencies will be. So the first step, create my inclusion groups that specify the frequency ranges for each of my sets of channels. So with that created, um, you'll see because I have my inclusion groups uh, view turned on, my ranges of device uh, frequencies show up right in the uh, frequency coordination view, which is pretty cool. The next thing I want to do is actually pick and choose which channels get assigned to those inclusion groups. 
Uh, now the reason you have to do this step is because uh, inclusion groups, one of the benefits of this feature is it can be assigned on a channel by channel basis. So if I wanted to, I could assign every single mic of my Axiom Digital channels to that inclusion group, but I could also only apply it to certain channels. Um, this could be useful if you wanted to limit certain systems into some very select spectrum that's quiet, but let the rest of the less important frequencies uh, be placed anywhere. So in this example, I'm going to actually select all of my uh, Axiom Digital channels, and with those selected, I can use my Items Properties sidebar to uh, to change the inclusion group for all these channels at once. So I'll expand the coordination view, and then in inclusion groups, um, I can select 470 to 500 mics. And you'll see, because we defined that in there, now it shows up, I select that and press apply, and you'll notice all of these channels get 470 to 500 mics applied as their inclusion group. And I'll do the exact same thing for the PSMs. So now, this inclusion group assignment indicates that these channels, when they are coordinated, should adhere to the rules specified by this group. And you'll notice when I bring in all of my frequencies into the coordination view, and I collapse them so we can see, not only are the model and band listed for each of these systems, but the inclusion group that they're members of also are displayed here. And one thing I want to do is I want to color my uh, channel markers by their channel color as they were assigned in the inventory, which means blue for my Axiom Digitals and pink for my, my PSMs, to show you that when I calculate, my microphone channels are going to be constrained to that inclusion group I set up for my mics, and my PSM 1000 frequencies are constrained to that IEM uh, range that I set up for my IEMs. Now, I didn't find all the frequencies I asked for, but I really wanted to illustrate to you how, from end to end, the way that uh, frequencies were constrained in the frequency coordination view and then appropriately assigned to the right type of device was done by creating the inclusion groups, assigning them to each of those channels in the inventory, and then bringing those channels with inclusion group assignments already made into the frequency coordination view. And then the rules of inclusion groups are properly applied. And you can see that if I were to take this coordination and go to uh, deploy it to my devices, everything looks great. Uh, all of my uh, frequencies that were coordinated for inclusion groups are listed here, and the channels that correspond to them are applied appropriately as well. Now I asked for um, more frequencies than I ended up finding, but I think the point still holds. So this is a great example of how inclusion groups can be applied to channels in the inventory, and then that assignment can be used to customize the frequencies that each type of channel get. If you've got any questions about this particular use case, I think I'll probably go over it in another video a little bit more, but uh, please be sure to leave comments down below. If you like this type of video, give it a thumbs up to let us know you'd like to see more types of videos like this. And uh, thanks for watching.